Campsite scalpers are causing problems in Kansas. Used RV prices are up, but how much? A dealership chain plans to nearly triple its locations in the next year. A Yellowstone tent camping experience that costs as much as a Ford Mustang and more. It's time for the latest in RV and camping news. I'm Jason Epperson and welcome to the RV Miles News Roundup where we provide you with all the latest in news and information about RVs, camping, and road trip travel. We begin with a couple that was hospitalized after a truck ran over their tent while they were sleeping in the Croatan National Forest in North Carolina, which as it happens, this is where I'm recording from right now. Not in this campground, but another one in this forest. The couple, both Marines, were stationed at Marine Corps Air Station Cherry Point, and while their injuries are serious, they're in stable condition. The driver and passenger of the truck are also Marines stationed at a different base. After hitting the tent, the driver left the scene and was later arrested on base by the base authorities. One of the survivors, Sarah Rojas, told the local ABC affiliate that at first she didn't know what had happened and that she's in disbelief that the person who ran them over didn't stop. Rojas said she crawled to her boyfriend, Justin York, who was covered in blood and began yelling for help. Rojas was hospitalized for four days. Her boyfriend remains in the hospital with a broken pelvis and ribs. The circumstances surrounding the incident are still under investigation, but the parties didn't know each other, and Rojas said the driver didn't even look back while driving away. In what may be the theme of 2021 camping, more dispersed sites have been closed. The Chico Flat Dispersed Camping Area in California's Sequoia National Forest is closed for the next year, at least within 350 feet of the Kern River. During the 2020 camping season, the Kern River Ranger District experienced an influx of visitors and sites have only mildly recovered from the human-related damage since. The Rangers believe the area's ecosystem is at risk and a year off will help the land continue to recover. The Kansas Wildlife Parks and Tourism Department is warning that people are reserving campsites and then selling them on a secondary market at inflated prices, websites like Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. They say there could be a potential fine and court cost if you're caught selling on a secondary market, and park rangers will be keeping an eye out for abuse, especially as most Kansas state parks are at 100% capacity on the weekends for the rest of the summer. The reselling of campsites has been a problem at popular camp camping locations across the country and in Canada for about the last decade. But now that camping is booming, it's going to be seen more and more. Many state and federal campgrounds require the person on the reservation to show identification upon check-in, and this is the reason. If you reserve a campsite and something seems fishy, it probably is. Make sure that you're reserving from the campground's official website or an authorized reseller. Camping World isn't the only RV dealership with stores multiplying like rabbits. Competitor Lazy Days Holdings operates 12 dealerships and a dedicated service center. And announced in a recent investor relations call the intention to open 20 more dealerships in the next year. About half will be new dealerships built from the ground up and half will be acquisitions. Whether they have plans to move into furniture design and manufacturing remains to be seen. We all know that RVs are more expensive right now, more than normal, and use prices are up as well, but how much? Eric Lawrence, the principal analyst of specialty markets at Black Book, says that used motorhomes are selling at wholesale auction for an average of about $64,000, up more than $1,500 from a month ago. But a year ago, the average selling price of a motorhome was nearly half, about $36,000. Towables are selling for an average of just over $22,000, up from $14,000 a year ago. The average motorhome on the used market is from the 2010 model year, and the average trailer is a 2015. This episode is sponsored by the Togo RV app. If you're looking for route navigation on your phone that takes into account the length and height of your RV, look no further than the Togo RV app, which also includes checklists, maintenance reminders, and recall alerts for your specific RV and a whole lot more. The app is free, but a $39 per year Togo RV Plus membership gets you full access to the navigation features, plus my favorite road trip planning software, Road Trippers Plus. You can get $10 off with the code RVMILES10X, and they have tire discounts and all sorts of stuff that makes Togo RV Plus very much worth it. New RVs are rolling off the production lines at record pace, even with huge raw material and component backlogs still plaguing the industry. RV shipments to dealers in April reached 51,813 units, the most of any April on record, and a 9% increase 
over the previous record set in April 2018. Each of the last six months have been a record month for shipments. There's no sign that production is slowing down anytime soon. Other types of camping gear are also seeing a surge in demand. Sales of tents, lanterns, backpacks, and camp stoves are up 25% compared to the same period in 2020 and up 86% compared to 2019. People are camping. Tourism operator Excursionist is betting some people will pay thousands for a private luxury tent camping experience. Their custom Yellowstone Glamp Camp is set up right outside of the National Park just for you. You'll stay in 150 square foot private canvas tents equipped with queen beds, down comforters, flushing toilets, and hot showers. After a long day spent exploring the park, you'll relax and unwind while your private chef prepares a gourmet dinner using fresh seasonal ingredients. Enjoy dessert baked in a Dutch oven over hot coals as you peer through the telescope for some world-class stargazing. The cost? About $27,000 for a group of four. Finally, Garrett DiMaggio, a nine-year-old boy suffering from Deuce Syndrome, a form of severe epilepsy, was surprised last Saturday by the Make-A-Wish Foundation and Lexington, Kentucky's Northside Family RV dealership with a brand new camper to travel in during the summer months. Originally, Garrett hoped to go to Disney World, but because of the COVID-19 pandemic and travel restrictions, he decided a camper would be better. Make-A-Wish says that RVs have been a popular request this past year with travel restrictions in place and with supply and demand, they've been difficult to track down. Abby and I wish Garrett and his family a joyous camping season. I hope you enjoyed this week's RV and camping news. We'll continue to keep you up to date on all of the latest stories and developments every Saturday. So make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And if you think a friend would like to know about this week's stories, please share this episode on social media. If there's anything specific you want us to cover, let me know. You can send your suggestions or requests for topics by emailing editor at rvmiles.com. Comment below on any thoughts you have on this week's items. The RVers TV show should be begging this guy to do a segment during their show. Thanks so much. That's very kind of you. On the subject of electric vehicles, I'd like to see Tesla convert their semi-truck platform to an open chassis for coach builders. That said, if I were a campground owner, I'd start thinking about the demand that's coming to the electrical infrastructure in the future. I live in Texas and just emailed my two representatives and a third who is a friend in another district asking for a simple amendment to exclude overnight camping in areas allowed by the landowners. Please do. What part of HB 1925 do you feel applies to vehicles? It specifically says shelter includes a tent, tarpaulin, lean-to, sleeping bag, bedroll, blankets, or any form of temporary, semi-permanent, or permanent shelter other than clothing or any handheld device designed to protect a person from weather conditions that threaten personal health and safety. What part do you think doesn't apply? It says any form of temporary, semi-permanent, or permanent shelter. That includes a vehicle. Absolutely. And the way that I can prove that to you is that they've added an amendment to allow for beach camping along the Gulf Coast. They wouldn't have to do that if it didn't include regular recreational camping. A lot of you trying to tell me that a front trunk is not a frunk, it's a bonnet. I hate to disagree, but a bonnet is a cover for an engine. A bonnet can be on the front or the back as well as a trunk. A frunk might not be a real word, it's a trunk, but a bonnet is definitely not a front trunk. That's it for this one, we'll see you next week.